360 swing, a swing that you can go all the way around on. So far, if we look at the plan, lovely plan, we've built the frame, this bit here, next bit I need to concentrate on is the swingy bit, the bit that sends you all the way around on. And to do this, we're going to need some sort of hub and axle system, so I'm going to drill some holes in the top of the frame and then mount my axle, which is going to be a big solid bit of 50mm steel. That's the next job, let's get on it. Have you got any more 50mm bright steel bar? Because I've just cut this one wrong. <laughs> That's the frame done, next thing we've got to do is the swingy arms. But there's a couple of things happen which we haven't got on camera. Now, in any video, if I have to make two of something, I'll make one first off camera so when I come to film it, I kind of know what I'm doing and I know it is right. Now, so we've made one arm and I thought let's present it to the frame, check everything's all right. There is our first problem. It weighs a ton, we can barely lift it up, so the thought of just lifting it in position is a no-go. But it doesn't matter, we've made a very wonderful winch system to winch it all up there. Now this does work, but with the one arm being as heavy as it is, even that struggle, we've had the ratchet jump a few times and it's nearly dropped on the edge and whatever. So making two arms, like I was previously going to do, is a bit of a no-go. But it doesn't matter, you can have a one arm 360 swing, that's not a problem. Now the next thing we've got is if we're only using one arm, the height and the length we've got them, it's all starting to get a little bit flimsy. So what I'm going to suggest, we're going to just to drop it down a tiny bit and then we'll try and stiffen up this uh, one arm and then see how it goes and then if that's not too bad then maybe we'll raise it back up. But that's what's going to happen. It's been a bit of a head destroyer this one is because I've been looking at this single arm, it's been flapping around and I've been like, because ah! I ain't been one of these before. But there we are, that's the plan, let's get to it. So this is the single arm which we made off camera. Now basically it's just a bit of two by two box section like we've been using for the frame. And we've clamped this plate around it to kind of give it a bit of support so it's not flopping everywhere like in that direction. And also where the bearing goes through it, it gets a little bit thin. So put these triangular bits up here to kind of support this. Now because we're only using one of these now, we need a bit of support in this direction because there's not going to be two next to each other. So we're going to get a bit of plate, bring it off here another bearing and then swoop it back again so it can't be like woohoo and there we are that's next job There we go, that's got four bearings on it now. So hopefully we won't have, uh, we were lost of all that like side plate that we had in it, making it all wobbly. Now next job, I need some foot rests and some things to grab hold of, and then counterweight on the other end. Yeah. Right, so the plan for the arms, we've, uh, we've cut them down a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, if you can imagine we've got our arm coming off our bearing, we're gonna get another bit and bolt it on the top so it kind of, what the fuck's a bit of tape on here? Let's take that off. So anyway, we've got our stubby bit sticking out our bearing and we're going to bolt another bit on the top which will give it a little bit more strength and then also, if we do decide we want to make it a bit longer, we can kind of move it down. So we're going to put a load of bolts in it. Now the key to this is making sure the bolts are all equal distances apart so we can unbolt it, move it down a couple of bolts and the holes will all still match up, which is, you know, it's always a bit of an issue, isn't it, with garage engineering. So I have a plan. I've got this uh, wonderful bit of two inch. I've drilled two holes for it, as dead in the centre as Colin can possibly make it, and then what we'll do, we'll put that on, 
drill a hole, bolt it, pilot drill it, take it off, drill it again, and then move it along, bolt that one into the next one we've drilled, drill another one, move it along, bolt it, so they're all the same distance apart, and then when we unbolt the thing and slide it down, it should all bolt up and make sense. It's a lot of bolting and a lot of drilling, fingers crossed it will work. In the good old days, before the rains came down, Right, so I've got my bar, which we're going to bolt on. Now I need something to uh, on the stand and hold on to. So I'm thinking, I'm going to get some poles and make some foot pegs. We'll put them right down the end, and then just above it, we'll stick another bar so I can kind of wedge my feet in between it, and hopefully that'll be enough to, uh, to stand on. And then a handlebar a little bit further up. And so that, you know, if any weld fails or anything like that, it's not a problem. We're going to drill holes through the beam, and slide them through and then weld them each end and then there's no risk of anything breaking off and then me going woo and stuff like that. So that's the plan. Then I'll be kind of on it, kind of like this and kind of hugging it. Yep. <laughs> you could tie your feet to it, but for some reason I don't like the idea of being tied to something. So, which is a, a thought maybe I should continue in life in general really. Side. There's been a lot of talk in the comments about how difficult it is to get over on a 360 swing. And it's right, it's a sport in Estonia, it's quite physically demanding, so I'm going to make it a little bit easy on my nimble self and give myself a counterweight. And also, because my swing is not fixed into the ground, if you don't have a counterweight, you're putting a lot of force through the frame and the whole thing might start rocking around and falling to bits and all sorts. So this is the this is the idea. This is our little swing arm, you see look, nicely balanced. Now if you put me on this end at the moment, I drop to the floor take a bit of effort. So you'd think put another weight of equal on the other side to counterweight it, but my weight is not equally distributed over my six foot frame. It's all mostly at the top. So if you can imagine me, I'm a little bit heavier, most of it's up here like that and then to get it to balance. Now what this is basically telling me is that I only need half the weight on the end here. So I don't need to stick 80 kilos on the end of the counterweight, it can be a lot less. Yeah, that's how we do maths on the Colin Furs channel. Let's get some sprockets on a bit of metal. So for my counterweight, I'm going to use a drum of water, because that way, if it is too heavy, we can drain a bit out. If it's not heavy enough, we can stick another one on the other side, and then just keep filling it up until we're happy. I mean, we might not want it to completely counterbalance us, it's just to make swinging that little bit easier. So I think we'll stick some uh, little supports underneath, a bit on the top, that can, uh, can sit on that one and then we can stick that there and then put a jubilee clip to fix it. A couple of other little plates the other side and hopefully it won't fall off and it'll be on the end. that, bolt them onto the arm. Then, jack it all up. <laughs> There we go, that's our arm slightly shortened, strengthened with the bearing a little bit more support. So let's winch it up, uh, bolt it on and see what we're looking like.
that's all finished. Now it's a lot stiffer now, so we can probably raise the axle back up to its near previous height. And then uh, give it a bit of a test, give it a paint job, add a couple of fuzzy extras, safety shirt and tie, and a bosh! It's all ready. Next video. Yep! <laughs>